what doesn't work in recruiting. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 129. Welcome to the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Fugler, Athletic Scholarship Coach and a dad of two scholarship athletes. I'm also the CEO of Recruit Me, podcaster, author, and speaker. This podcast is 15 minutes that will change your scholarship future. I dig in and give you takeaways you can use immediately. You can find every episode on my website. That's recruitme.com, but it's easier on an app like the Apple Podcast app, my app of choice for listening to podcasts. Also, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeart, and others. I've got something to offer you. It's the Recruiting Power Pack. I've talked about that. It's you got to have it. If you're a sports family, a high school sports family, you got to have this. And the best thing about it, well, Besides the quality, I hope, the best thing about it is that it's free, the free recruiting power pack. Uh, You get three items, the first steps to an athletic scholarship. You can understand the first four things you need to do right away. It's a PDF download that I wrote. Secondly, uh, it's an audio, and the audio talks about video, when and how to use video. So you grab that and you can listen to that. And the third thing in the Recruiting Power Pack is a player profile or resume template. Uh, Your most important document is your player profile, your most important tool. And you can use this fillable form to be able to create your very own. The Recruiting Power Pack, you find it at recruit-me.com, recruitme.com. Last episode... Um, We talked about uh, uh, how to leverage your time uh, for the best recruiting results. And I leveraged my time so much, I forgot one of our brand new features. I'm I'm getting used to this. And it's the playbook tip of the week. The playbook tip of the week. One zinger that you can use. It comes from my athletic scholarship playbook. So I I missed. I didn't do that. I went ahead and tried to sell you the book. I did talk about that. I wouldn't forget that. But... Here is the playbook tip of the week. I'm going to give you last week's, and at the end of the show, I'll give you this week's. So playbook tip of the week, number one, poor grades. Shut off a coach's interest more quickly than almost anything else. Therefore, make academics a high priority. Our experience for our twin sons at the showcase uh, where they were recruited, end up being recruited and, and going to that, that university, the coach that they actually played for eventually in college, he had his roster of all the athletes at the showcase. It had their athletic stats and their academic stats, and he was there crossing certain athletes out. And the ones he crossed out without even seeing them compete, I mean, this was before they even took the field. He crossed them out because they didn't have the academics to compete at his school, and he knew it, he wasn't going to waste his time. So make sure that you make academics a high priority, or your poor grades could shut off a coach's interest more quickly than anything else. So that's playbook tip of the week number one. We'll get to the second one at the end of the show. Uh, You can get my athletic scholarship playbook on Amazon. Since I gave a big plug for it last week, I'm just going to give a little one this week. Okay, we're getting into what doesn't work in recruiting. Sounds like a pretty negative show, but that's okay because we need to have some negative things said, don't we? We don't get better as an athlete unless we're told what we're doing wrong and then shown what to do right. Uh, There's a time and place for everything. I taught you last week how to leverage your time. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments on that and, and any episode too and your experiences in recruiting as you apply these things. But today, we're going to talk about what doesn't work in recruiting. And just like last week, I got five things for you. They say you should present things in groups of three or five or seven. I think seven's too many, three, mm, I don't know. Uh, You're looking to excel, so we're going to give you five in this episode. And the first one, I'm going to step on some toes uh, and (sighs) hear me out on this, okay? The first thing that doesn't work in recruiting is parents getting in the way. <laughs> wow. I've seen that all the time, and I hear it from coaches, college coaches as well. And I got to tell you, I tried so hard as a dad not to get in the way. 
of our kids recruiting. There is a place for parents, not like you step out of the picture altogether. Coaches really do want to talk to you, but coaches want to hear, hear from and talk to the athlete first. And, and primarily, they want to talk to the athlete. But they do want to talk to you. They want to find out what fam- kind of family uh, uh, your kid is from. Uh, and it's not that they're going to ignore you, but they really want to hear the heart of the athlete. They want to hear whether the athlete wants to go to their school. They want to have the conversation with the athlete. Uh, be a team, of course. Parent and athlete, be a team. But know your roles. Know your roles. Not rules, but maybe they are rules. Maybe you need to set some rules. (laughs) That's not a bad idea. Set some rules. Parents and athletes, set some rules about your roles. What is your purpose in this whole thing? Athlete, what is your purpose? Parent, what is your purpose? Really work that out, but don't get in the way. That won't work in recruiting, and it could shut things off. Second thing that doesn't work in recruiting is stretching the truth. You know that player profile I talked about earlier that I have for you on my website? It's um, it's a fillable form. In other words, you fill in the data. You fill in the facts. And when you do that, that is the first thing a coach will look at. You don't want to stretch the truth. You want to present your son or daughter in the best light possible. Athlete, you want to present yourself in the best light possible. But please, be truthful. Don't stretch the truth because you know what? The coaches are going to find out. They're going to find out. At some point, they're going to watch you compete. They're going to check you out. And if you sold them a false bill of goods, that's, that's going to turn them off and word could get around. Present yourself well. Present your best. But don't stretch the truth. When you're putting things on paper for coaches, when you're emailing them, when you're talking with them, don't stretch the truth. And I know how much you want to want to be recruited. You want your kid recruited, uh, but make sure you stay with the truth because the truth will get out and you want it to match what you're talking about and how you've presented yourself. So that's the second thing that won't work in recruiting. The third thing that doesn't work in recruiting is attending instructional camps. Attending instructional camps. Uh, You can attend them, but those aren't recruiting camps. You can attend them to get better, but don't expect to be recruited there. Make sure as you attend a camp that you understand what the purpose of this camp is. Are you truly, really going to get in front of coaches so they can evaluate you as a prospect? Or is this merely an instructional camp and they've got their uh, their players out there running the camp and you don't see much of the coach and it's just uh, it's the fundraiser for the program, but it really isn't a recruiting camp. Uh, you, you're going to get tempted to attend as many camps as you can thinking that the coaches are going to find you and they're going to notice you and you're going to get recruited. However, make sure you do that at recruiting camps. Get that clear. You don't have to attend a ton of camps either when you narrow it down because you want to attend camps where you're interested in that program where the coach that you want to have see you is there. And that's that's a good way to narrow it down. So attending instructional camps won't work in recruiting. Uh, Fourth thing that won't work in recruiting is being narrow in your options. Being narrow in your options. One of the things that I always tell parents is and athletes is cast your net wide. Cast your net wide. I've had a number of families that have written to me telling me about the 30, 40, even 75 schools that they wrote to. You know what each one of these has in common? Their son or daughter got recruited and got a scholarship. They cast their net wide. When you're coming out of the gate, you may have a handful of schools that you're highly interested in, athlete and parent. You need more than a handful. There's going to be elimination. In fact, half of those schools, most likely, or more, will eliminate you right out of the gate. 
is just not going to be a good fit. The coach is not going to respond. The coach isn't going to be interested. There'll be more that you're not interested in once you get to know the coach, the program, the school, a lot of different things, what the academic offerings are, and you thought you were interested in the outset, but you're you're not interested now. So the handful of prospective schools is now down to one or two, and you are really taking your chances. Don't be too narrow in your options. Keep your mind open. You don't have to, as you think about your list of schools and make your list of schools that you want to approach, it, it's not like they all have to be a 10 and a 10 scale. They don't all have to have everything that you're interested in. They've got to have several of those things. Several of those factors must be a match. But if you get too narrow, you're in trouble. Start with 40 or 50. That's what I recommend. That's what I tell families. This is an ongoing process, too. You'll be adding schools and programs along the way. Your first list is not your final list. Don't be too narrow in your options. Wait till the very end when you make your final school choice. When you come down to the end, you want two, three, four, five options that you're looking at so you can make that choice. Being too narrow in your options doesn't work in recruiting. Then finally, Giving up control of the recruiting process. This one is huge. That doesn't work in recruiting. There are a lot of services, consultants, agents, as they're called, some call themselves, that uh, will gladly take your money and take control of the recruiting process. And some, when they say they'll take your money and they take control of the recruiting process, they really don't take control of it at all, but they've taken control of your money. But I believe wholeheartedly that if you can, if you can take control yourselves as a family of the recruiting process, you'll get better results if you know what to do. Taking control of the process and knowing what to do. Both of those things are important. Taking control of the process and not knowing what to do, you're going to lose. However, these days, you can do it yourself. You don't need a third party. The beauty of this is you've got your best interests in mind. Parent, you've got your son or daughter's best interests in mind. Athlete, you've got your own best interest in mind. You will fight for that. You will go to the mat for that. Coaches also love it when the athlete himself or herself is making the contact and is showing genuine interest. They don't want to go scouring the nation or the region for athletes that might be interested in their program. They want athletes who are interested already, who have shown interest. When you take control and keep control of the recruiting process, you're front and center. And the coaches love that. You're going to get better results. Giving up control of the recruiting process is definitely not the way to go. You can do it. Uh, I, I mentioned my book, The Athletic Scholarship Playbook. That's a tool you can grab to, um, to use to go through the process, take you step by step. And I also encourage you to check out uh, Recruit Me 3.0, the new Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship System. And there are other resources out there as well. In fact, uh, next week we're going to be talking about, I think it's next week, five free recruiting resources, either next week or the week after. We'll get to that. So we've got the playbook tip of the week to close with here. I give you two this week because I, I, I shortchanged you last week. Okay, here, here's the playbook tip of the week from my athletic scholarship playbook. The school selection process can take a year or more. So start in your freshman or sophomore year. You probably won't get recruited that young, but there are things you need to do in order to be ready. The recruiting process is a long process. And yeah, starting as early as freshman or sophomore year, not heavily into it, but those are the preparation years. So you are really, really in the groove in junior year when the recruiting begins for most athletes. So that's your Playbook tip of the week from the Athletic Scholarship Playbook. I'm John Fugler. Good to have you along again this week. And yes, next week we are going to be talking about, um, 
I just want to verify that. Let me look at the schedule here. Yes, five free recruiting resources so you can do it on your own. Take care and God bless you.